Hello, welcome back to the next in our series of video tutorials showing an introduction to the IDF to pH toolkit here. Um, so I'd like to pick up right where we left off in the last video and continue our discussion of the treated floor area input methods that we can use in our, uh, in our rig here. Um, so if you're following along from the last video, you've seen how we were able to create our honeybee zones, and export those to Energy Plus, we were able to read those back in and, and convert the Energy Plus data into PHPP valid um, objects, and then export all of those PHPP objects out to our, our Excel document, able to stream that in real time so that as we change things in our Rhino scene, they change in our Excel document. And we were starting to discuss in the last video um, about how we can input our, our TFA, our treated floor area for our building. And we showed a couple different methods there. We can either pass in just numeric values, we can uh, sort of analyze the area of a surface and, and apply a derating factor in, in, grind, in Grasshopper using a sort of native Grasshopper tools. Um, we can pass in a surface directly if we if we draw our interior surfaces and, and sort of pass those in. Um, and that's all fine. Um, all of those work. And um, what I'd like to show here is, is one more method for um, uh, managing that room by room information. And this is the method that I prefer and this method is going to require a little more input, but it's going to yield better results, and we're going to get a lot more detail out the um, in in the PHPP. So we're going to be able to see a lot more more information, a lot more detail when we when we utilize this this method. So um, we have our our Rhino scene on the left, our, our PHPP in the lower left there, and our, our Grasshopper scene on the right hand side here. So um, let's uh, let's uh, let's continue on. Okay, so we were saying in our last video that we would pass in all of our information here as a as a referenced in set of geometries. We were referencing in some geometry from our Rhino scene. We were passing that into the TFA input on our create Excel object component here. And as you said, that that's fine. That works. That got us the information into the PHPP. Um, but uh, it's not terribly flexible. And uh, it just brings everything in as a, a single value. So we, we never get to see the itemized list of all of our, our individual rooms. It, it also doesn't help us manage any of the other room-by-room room information that we might want to know. Room name, room number, um, fresh air ventilation, flow rates, etc., uh, uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to delete this guy out of the scene, and we're going to bring this information in in a, in a different way. Uh, we're going to use one of the model side components now. So if I go to my building type rollout, the um, rollout that installed when you downloaded the, uh, the new tools and you go to 01 model, um, uh, here in 01 model we have all sorts of new tools and the, and the one that we're going to use um, uh, here for the first time is going to be this uh, PHPP rooms from Rhino. Uh, and this is a component which has been designed to uh, try and manage all of this detailed room by room information and then push that out to the uh, to the PHPP in a couple of different ways, enable us to get a really detailed view of our of our building and a really accurate assessment of our P of our TFA, our treated floor area. So I have this new component and I need to decide where to drop it into my setup here. So I could sort of drop it almost anywhere. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep all of this type of uh, information before my Energy Plus export. So I want this information to actually flow through my Energy Plus export. So I want the, all of this information to sort of feed in. So I'm going to drop it over here on the, the left hand side of my Energy Plus export. Uh, and I'm going to make myself a little bit of room here. So I'm going to make some, some room. And let's make a new uh, a new division here. Again, keep our uh, our, our uh, scene nice and tidy. So let's call this. We'll call this um, create interior rooms. So we have this new component. So what, how does this component work? So this new component takes in a couple of different inputs. First of all, it can take in the honeybee zones themselves. So this is going to take in the actual zone geometry from honeybee. It can also take in some TFA surface geometry. So we can pass in uh, several different uh, surfaces here. And then we can also pass in some room geometry. We'll see in a little bit. We can actually build out really detailed room shapes or space shapes for the rooms themselves. Uh, output coming out of this component, we're going to have the actual honeybee zones. So these are going to be modified honeybee zones. We're going to actually add the rooms to the honeybee zone. And so we have these modified honeybee zones. We'll also have some preview components here showing the actual rooms themselves and then the room geometry. 
So this is going to get used in line with our Honeybee tools. So we built our Honeybee zone, we export the Honeybee zone over here, and before we do that, we're going to pass the Honeybee zone through this room builder. So I'm going to pass in the Honeybee zone here. Notice the output now is a, is a another is a Honeybee zone. And so I'm going to pass this Honeybee zone onto my exporter. Scroll over. So this is my exporter. I'm going to pass this along to my exporter here. And there we go. Right out of the gate, it should work by default. Let's take a look at what we're getting as output here. Let's take a look at the room. Uh, yep, we get one room. So we have a PHPP room object. It has no name. It's on example zone, and it has a TFA of 396 square meters, TFA vector of one. What, what is the room? What room are we looking at? Well, we can take a look at the preview geometry here. If I plug in my room uh, boundary representation to my uh, you know, geometry component. And notice here we get the preview of the room itself. So what is this room? Well, notice that the room is kind of inset a little bit. So it's sort of in a little bit from all the edges and it goes up a standard two and a half meters or eight feet in height. So this is just a default room and it's gonna take the shape of our zone. So if I was to come in here, let me get rid of these interior zones. If I was to come in here and I was to, well, let's do it this way, we'll do sub-object sub selection and I'll just distort this shape a little bit. I'll just distort the, the shape of our, our mass. Notice here that the room follows the shape of the mass. So no matter what shape we make our honeybee zone, the room is going to sort of conform to it. So this is going to make a default room, which is just going to fill up your mass and is going to get extruded that standard two and a half meters up. So we're getting both a floor area and we are getting the volume for that space. So let me delete these out of the panel here. So, so that's working. That is also flowing into our energy plus export. And so if we look at our PHPP now, what do we see? Well, we don't see anything. We're back to zero for treated floor area and we're back to not getting any results here. And this goes back to the point I was making before. Uh, this information around detailed interior room shapes and TFA is included nowhere in the IDF. It is not part of the IDF file. That type of information is not relevant to Energy Plus, and so it's not recorded as part of the Energy Plus. So even though we are passing it to the Energy Plus export here, it do, that information does not make it past the export. So there's no way for that information or that data to get through this export here. And so we we need to um, we need to do one small modification here. So you'll notice here we have our export. It exports the IDF file. The IDF file comes into our, our reader. The IDF objects then flow into the converter. We'll notice that the converter has two inputs. It actually has an input for the IDF objects from the reader, and it has an input for the honeybee zones themselves. So in any case where we cannot get the data we need from the IDF file, where we're not able to get the data that we want from the Energy Plus simulation, and there are many places where we'll find this, we can actually feed the honeybee zones themselves. And in the cases where we're not able to find the data that we want, this converter will first look at the IDF object, and then when it can't find the data that it wants, it'll then look at the honeybee, honeybee zone object. So I need to input the honeybee zones here in this location. So let's make that connection. I'm going to adjust my scene a little bit here so that uh, things look, uh, look nice and clean. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my output here. Let me change this. And I'm going to call this honeybee zones. Okay, so these are my honeybee zones, which are flowing out of my room builder. They're going to pass to the Energy Plus exporter, and at the same time, I'm going to pass them over to the uh, converter. So let me clean up a little bit here. So the converter is getting data from both the IDF and the Honeybee scene. And it's going to weave those two data streams together in just the right way so that it actually exports the geometry that we want out of the, out of the backside there.
All right, so we have our detailed Honeybee data coming in. We have our detailed IDF data coming in. So let's take a look at our PHPP now. And our PHPP is still zero. So our PHPP is still failing. The data is not coming through. So uh, let's take a look. Why, why are we still getting a zero? Why is, why is this not working? Didn't we say that um, all of our detailed Honeybee zone information was going to pass through? Well, let's go to the areas worksheet and see what's, what's happening here. Well, you can see here on line 34, we're getting no information for our TFA. So for some reason, our TFA is not coming in. Well, there's a very simple reason for that. We need to make one change over here on the PHPP setup in order for this to work correctly. So remember before we were passing in to our uh, geometry uh, object here, we were passing in the TFA information. So we were passing in TFA. We, we showed we could pass in a number. We could pass in surfaces. Um, for this to understand and read the honeybee information correctly, we need to tell it that we're passing in honeybee information. So into the TFA, I need to input from zone geometry as a string, geometry. So I need to input this as a string from zone geometry, and I'll input that into the TFA here. Uh, and now in this case, now notice we are getting the right information pushing through into our TFA. Okay, so as soon as we just have to, we just have to give it that flag. We have to say, "Oh, hey, I want you to get all this information from the Honeybee data. I don't want you to, you know, wait around for me to pass in a surface or something." Um, so now this is going to work uh, in a much more automatic fashion. So if I come in here, use subobject selection to grab this guy again and sort of move him around. And if you notice, as I modified the Honeybee zone, both all of our geometry adjusts and the TFA adjusts as well. Right. So now I have a lot of flexibility here, and uh, all of this is going to stream through properly. So this create rooms component is going to be a, a key piece of setting up your PHPP so that it's actually working properly. Now, one of the other things that we can do with this rooms component is actually pass in explicit room geometry. So just like we were doing before, one of the ways that we like to work with this is that we like to actually draw the interior spaces and then pass those in explicitly. And we can pass in a lot more um, information that way as well. So not just the floor area, but things like room names, numbers, etc. Let me clean up a little bit here. So for instance, let me, let me undo those changes just so we go back to a nice uh, orthogonal document here. So there's our mass. And let's say we want to draw some rooms inside of our mass here. Well, let's do that first. So in our Rhino scene, I'm going to come to the top view. And let's just draw some surfaces. I could draw them as curves. I could draw them as surfaces. I could draw them sort of however I, I like. But let's say, let's say that I'm going to draw one big shape here. And then maybe we'll do, a, I don't know, we'll do a small shape here. And then maybe we'll do like, I don't know, a little hallway. And then another kind of small shape. And obviously, I'm being very sloppy with my drafting. If I had a CAD drawing or something, I could use that as an underlay to trace. I could, you know, draw in a much more, you know, tidy fashion for sure. But for our purposes, this will work just fine. So if I grab these surfaces now, go back to perspective view, and you'll see these surfaces are down on the, 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 um, the work plane here. So I've got these surfaces, and I want to bring these in to my Rhino scene. So I can do that in all sorts of different ways. I can uh, reference them in as a you know B rep. I could use a pipeline which is connected to the uh, to that layer. Um, all sorts of different ways that I could do this. Let's do it as a pipeline. Stick with our pipeline uh, method here. So we'll say interior floor area is the layer filter, and I want to bring in all the geometry. So notice I get four referenced surfaces now. One, two, three, four. So I get all four of those surfaces. And I can now pass those surfaces from the pipeline into the room TFA surfaces entry. So this will accept either a list of numbers or a list of surfaces. So let me go ahead and connect those in. And we will see an error. What's the error? Why didn't that work? Let's take a look at what the error says. So we get a little bubble here. What does the error say? Something went wrong building the TFA floor surfaces. Uh-oh. Are you sure that you applied TFA and room name info for all of the surfaces that you passed in? Uh, no, I didn't, I didn't do that at all. I didn't do any of that. So this is saying to us, hey, 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 I get it. You passed in some surfaces, but you didn't give me all the information that I need. Let me delete this. I'll turn this off for now. So we need to assign some information 
to these surfaces so that this component understands how to properly read those surfaces, how to work with those surfaces. And we're going to do that using some of the new Rhino side tools. So, so far we've been working in the Grasshopper side. We want to now look at some of the new Rhino side tools. So if I come up here to the PHPP ribbon, to this uh, new PHPP toolbar, which is installed as part of the IDF to PH tools, you'll see that there's a whole series of new Rhino side tools, which allow us to do all sorts of parameter assignment inside of our Rhino document. So I can actually assign and host all sorts of data, all sorts of information back in the Rhino side. And that data will flow through into the Grasshopper scene and then into my uh, PHPP. <clears throat> So let's go ahead and assign some information here. So let's just select one of these rooms. And let's say this is going to be our, like, I don't know, living room kitchen in this little house that we're building here. So how are we going to assign that information? I'm going to come up here to this guy, this um, command, which is the PHPP set room command, or set room data command. And you'll see if I click this button, we'll get a little bit of a, um, an input dialog window. So I get this input dialog window and it's going to ask me for some information about the room. So first of all, it's going to ask me for the room number, the room name. It's going to ask me to assign a TFA factor from this list. And then it's going to ask me to input some information about the fresh air ventilation. And if this was a non-residential project, I could then input some non-residential usage information here in the lower quadrant. Now, because this is, let's say this is just a typical residential project, so let's not worry too much about the non-residential data down below. But let's input some, some basic information. So let's say, I don't know, this is room 101, and we'll call this the kitchen living room, something like that. That would have a TFA factor of 1 because it's main living space. And then we have to assign some fresh air, vent we don't have to, but we it's a good idea to, to apply some fresh air ventilation flow to that space. So if it was a kitchen, at normal flow rate, so at normal fan speed, if it's a kitchen, I probably want something like 36 CFM of continuous extract. Now notice here that the fresh air flow rates are in cubic meters per hour, so the whole tool is, is built in metric, but if you like, uh, and sometimes I do, uh, we, we can pass in information in IP units. So for instance, I can just say CFM, and it'll convert that over to cubic meters per hour. So all I need to do, I could also just input that as cubic meters per hour. Um, but if I, if I want to, I can put that in as CFM if I just write out CFM, and that'll do the conversion for me there. So maybe I've got 36 CFM or 60 cubic meters per hour of continuous extract at normal fan speed uh, from, my, from my kitchen or living zone. Right, through the ERV or the HRV. So again, I don't need to set any of the non-residential elements here. If it was a you know, classroom or something, we, we could set that kind of stuff down here, but it's not. Let's just, let's just say it's a kitchen, so we'll say OK. And now what's happening at this point? So we've passed in the information that we need there, and I'm still getting my, still getting my error here. So I'm still getting my error. So okay, let's um, let's uh, let's see. What we, let's let's uh, flesh out the rest of these guys. Let's uh, fill in the rest of these here. So I'll go up here. I'll go to set room data again. And what is this going to be? We'll say 102. I don't know. Let's say that this is one of the bedrooms or something like that. And at normal fan speed, a bedroom might have 20 cfm. All right. So maybe 34 cubic meters per hour. So we'll say okay. And now that guy is uh, working there as well. OK, if we want to see if this is working now, so we've made some assignments. If we want to see if this is actually working, we could come in here. We're still getting the error, but that's because we have a couple of rooms that we haven't named yet. But let's, let's see if this is working. So let's take a look at some of our output here. And let's see if this is getting any valid rooms. Yes, it is. So it's getting a couple of valid rooms, 101 kitchen and living. 102 bedroom. And notice it's calculating the treated floor area or the area for each of those zones accordingly. And if we want to see the room volumes which are being created, I can output a preview of those room volumes here and notice that it's performing that two and a half meter extrusion on those room shapes based on the surface itself. So let's finish up uh, uh, entering our, our information here. So let's call, let's say we've got another couple rooms to assign. Let's say that this one is 103. Let's call this the hallway. And um, uh, let's see, this is going to, I don't know what this, what would this be? Let's say we have an extract here of like 12 CFM, right? 
continuous extract from the hallway, sure, at normal fan speed. And then lastly, let's come in here and I'll go to our last, uh, our last room and let's call this 104, we'll call this another bedroom or something. Or let's make this a mechanical room. Let's say it's a little, I don't know, mech room. I don't know, this is a weird little house we're building, but that's fine. And um, let's say at normal fan speed, this one also wants 12 CFM of extract from your uh, mechanical space there. So we'll say okay. And once we input that guy, notice our warning goes away because now we have all valid TFA surfaces and I get uh, one, two, three, four rooms which are being built. So 101 kitchen, 102 bedroom, 103 hallway, and 104 mechanical room. So all of that information is uh, flowing through into our into our uh, uh, our, our project here. Uh, and notice in the TF in our um, in our PHPP, we're now getting good TFA information uh, as a sum of all of those rooms. We also, because we're using the room builder, are going to get a detailed breakdown of all the rooms. Now, where can we go to see that? If we come over to our additional ventilation worksheet here, so the additional ventilation worksheet, the additional ventilation worksheet is where we build out complex or more complex mechanical systems. So if I scroll down a little bit, notice that I have here a listing of all of the various rooms with their areas, their ceiling heights, their fresh air supplies, so their uh, fresh air ventilation supply, as well as schedule information about how the fresh air system is running. Now, a lot of this is using defaults. So right now it's running at 100% fan speed, 100% of the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Not very realistic, um, but in, in any event, we, we have that uh, information here. So all that information is flowing through into our, into our project correctly. And we're getting, if we go back to our verification worksheet, we're getting our TFA accurately assessed based on those rooms and their net interior floor area. So we've got four rooms here. Um, each of them is coming in. Now, the next question that might pop up is, uh, well, wait, but some of these, maybe some of these don't have two and a half meter, um, you know, ceiling height. Maybe they're higher or lower or some combination thereof. So how do we, uh, how do we add even more detail to, to, um, to our project here? Well, we do have the ability to enter in or to, to um, input detailed room geometry in addition to just the floor areas. So in addition to the floor surfaces, we could input the room geometry. So let's take a look at how we might do that. Let's do that using another pipeline. So I'm going to go to a new layer. I'm going to call this interior uh, room, whoops, interior room geometry. And let's make a new pipeline here and let's filter for interior room geometry layer. And currently we have no information because we're not getting any information there, but eventually we will. So what might that look like if we wanted to actually model some room geometry? Well, maybe I would just come in and I would, you know, grab whatever Rhino tool that I like and I would, I don't know, draw some room geometry. So there's some room geometry. Notice it's coming in as a, a reference. And let me pass that in to our room builder. So I now have this geometry. I'm going to pass it in as room geometry. And let's see what happens here in this case when I do that. Well, I get a little, nothing seems to have happened, but I did get a little warning here. Let's see what this says. Uh oh, it says, I could not join the room geometry or the TFA surface and any room geometry together to make a closed B rep for room 102, the bedroom. Please ensure that the geometry can be joined and try again. Well, what does that mean? Well, what this is trying to do, what the room builder is trying to do is it's trying to take this room geometry, this room shape, and join it to this room floor surface. Right. Isolate these guys. If we go to if we go to our shaded viewport, you'll be able to see that a little more explicitly. I have a closed solid, and a closed solid cannot be joined to a floor surface, right? I can't join these two uh, shapes together in Rhino. That doesn't, that doesn't work. I can't uh, join things that way. In order to actually be able to join these two together, I'm gonna have to open up or remove the bottom surface from this shape. And as soon as I do that, now if I move this back here and let's uh, show all of our objects, bring everybody back wireframe. Now notice that this room shape is being driven by this geometry. Right? So the room shape here is being driven 
by this geometry. And if I adjust this geometry, the room shape is going to adjust accordingly. Right? And I can make whatever room shape I want or is you know, determined by the architecture of the space. Right? So I can pass in whatever shape I like here. It can be whatever level of complexity, so long as the bottom of the shape is open, so long as the room geometry can be joined onto one of these surfaces. And notice our little warning went away. As soon as it's able to do that, it doesn't give us that warning anymore. If we don't pass in any room geometry, we're just going to use the standard default two and a half meter um, extrusion, right? So that'll, that would be the extrusion here. Um, but if we decide to pass in some room geometry, it'll all get joined together and we can make whatever level of complexity or level of detail we want. Of course, that'll all flow through into our PHPP. Now, where does this affect the PHPP? Well, if we go to the uh, ventilation worksheet, the main place that this is going to affect the PHPP is down here in our net volume, uh, our VN50. So if, you'll see as I, whoops, as I adjust this, so if I was to take this edge and I was to sort of move it up, notice that our volume goes from 709 to 742 cubic meters. All right, so I can change the shape of the volume and that, uh, or the, cha the change the shape of the space, and the uh, volume gets computed and passed through into our PHPP here. That's our VN50 for all intents and purposes. Right. So all of this is going to flow through. It's also, of course, going to um, show up here in our additional event worksheet. Notice this 102 bedroom, the one that I'm messing around with, now has a lower ceiling height and a lower volume, and that's going to change our evaluation here in the additional ventilation worksheet as well. So lots of different ways for us to work with uh, these tools. We can input geometry. We can input um, uh, all sorts of different levels of detail, um, uh, depending on you know how accurate or, or how much detail we want to see in our PHPP model at the end there. Uh, but this is probably the way that we prefer to work with uh, most of our files, most of our projects. Um, certainly, if you're going to be you know pursuing something like a PassPass certification, you know this is the level of detail that you'll probably need. Um, so you're going to be expected to build out all those interior spaces. Um, the one last thing that I'll, I'll show here is we can, of course, modify the TFA factor. So, for instance, if I grab, let's say, the mechanical room, and I come into my set room data. So this is my room 104, mechanical room. If I change the TFA factor, so right now notice the mechanical room down here, line 59, has an area of 37 square meters. If I change the TFA factor to 0.5 and say OK, if we then make sure that everything updates here, notice that our mechanical room area has dropped to 19 square meters. So the TFA factor gets applied when we build these rooms. So the TFA factor and the room shape itself are all being taken into account when we build out these, these uh, interior spaces, these interior rooms. Okay. So hopefully that all makes sense. Uh, we now have everything pretty well running. If we go take a look at our verification worksheet, the verification worksheet here, we're getting some good results. We're getting some answers. We have our TFA. We have our uh, number of dwelling units. Uh, we're basically all set up, and we have our model. And now we can start to ask the question, why are we getting 190 kilowatt hours per square meter uh, per year of heating demand? Why are we getting a zero for our cooling demand? Uh, and how are these uh, numbers being calculated? What is informing those? So in future uh, videos, we'll come back and we'll start to flesh out a lot more detail here. Uh, we'll start to add detail around things like uh, surfaces or uh, 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 envelope surfaces, uh, U values, materials. We'll take a look at adding fresh air ventilation systems and the like. Um, but uh, uh, hopefully you're up to this point. Hopefully you have a working PHPP if you're following along and you're able to see some results here as, as well. Uh, so I think we'll leave it there for now and uh, I look forward to seeing everybody back in the uh, uh, next video.